sleep so well last night. I don't know exactly what it is. I uh, I don't recall necessarily being up, but I do remember I wasn't sleeping. And I don't remember why. I don't know why. And I slept in a little bit, about 15 minutes after the alarm went off. I hit the stop button and fell right back to sleep. Which is funny because just last night I was talking with Miko over my walk. I was mentioning how I'm sleeping well. And she she speculated that it might be because my job has changed. My big project is over and I'm on a, a project now that's much uh, more uh, much easier to manage. And then last night, don't know just why. This happens to me sometimes. And I feel it now. I feel the consequence now. I feel all out of sorts. I don't feel well rested. I feel... Um, a little unease, out of ease, if I don't get a good night, solid night's sleep. Mm. So, I don't know why, but there's that. I told you, Miko, that as we were walking, and I said, yeah, I do have one thing that's bothering me, and that's the dogs. I, I, this big, oh, we talked about, you, Miko, and I had the most fascinating and interesting discussion as we were walking. How can I, I almost forgot about this. We were talking about the uh, move to come, and we talked about how in the past, past moves across the ocean, because this, this will be the fifth time that we will have made this wholesale change between Japan and America, how in the past we didn't worry even though we didn't realize just how much danger we were in. We talked about the first time that each of us, that Yumiko came, this would, that would actually be time number six, the Yumiko came to, uh, you know, the very first one, came to America to Humboldt State University, and I went there too, in a motorhome to be homeless on the streets, and how each of us was just oblivious to the consequence of what we were doing. And we, we attributed that to our youth and our invulnerability of youth and our great, deep, inviting ignorance. And then how after university we went back to Japan and just started from scratch. And then astonishingly, appallingly, the third time after that, which was when um, we came back to live in Santa Barbara, choosing one of the most expensive cities in the United States. And I slept on the beach. I was homeless again, second time in my life. Got up in the morning, this was before the internet existed, read newspapers and called people from phone booths to find a job. And before Yumiko, I came over. And how I wasn't worried in the slightest even though I had only like $800 in my pocket left between me. I was already living on the streets. I wasn't worried in the slightest. And then, of course, going back to Japan with a child in tow when she was, Emily was three. And how oblivious we were. Well, we didn't, we were, it's not that we weren't oblivious. We, it's just that we had a lot of money, so we thought we could throw money at any problem we could have. And that was true. <laughs> we did. And then the next, last one after that, which I would guess one, two, three, four. Wait, wait, one, two, three, four, five. That five. This would be, this is the sixth one then. Doesn't really count the first one because I didn't try across the ocean, but Yumiko did. So the sixth one for her. Then the fifth one. Um, coming back to America, and that was the big risky one. Oh my God, that was the big risky one because I came, you know, I kind of got myself a job on, I talked myself into a into a job that I wasn't qualified for, and had a, and could have easily been fired. I was on a probationary status for that first year, specifically for that reason, so they could get rid of me if I wasn't qualified, and I got fired from my first project. And what a disaster that would have been if I had been fired at that time. Because you know, I had no skills, no prospect. I had no job back in Japan, no job here, no money. Um, Yumiko would not have been able to support the family back in Japan. That was a horrible, absolute risk. Good Lord. But we, that was a nosedive of the airplane. We pulled out of that and got back up to cruising altitude where we are now. And here we are now about to do what would be, a, for me, the fifth time across and a Yumiko the sixth time across and um, across the ocean. 
And I'm more nervous about this one than any other before when I have no good reason to be nervous at all on this one. Um, you know, our daughter's grown. She's been, has a job offer. She'll probably decide on that, uh, decide on that job offer uh, by the end of the week. Um, she's good. You know, we have no small kid anymore to take care of. Uh, you know, our, our retirement income is kicking in next year before I go. Um, so I don't have to worry, worry about money. Um, but we've got the money saved up to buy a house. Um, what's to worry about? Yet I'm really anxious about this move. First world problem, I guess. And I told you, Miko, last night, getting to the point that I was nervous about our dogs. It's going to be really expensive to uh, contract with an agency to uh, move the dogs for us. I'm tempted to do that, though, just to make sure it goes smoothly. Mm. Yeah, that's my worry. The rest I'm not so worried about. Although I did, I did um, update my resume over the weekend. I guess I am, um, I am worried about not having a job, especially, especially for the, until age 62 when Social Security kicks in. Because it'll be a little bit tight until then. I have to live on my pension until uh, Social Security uh, starts. That'll be a little bit tight. I mean, no, no, it won't. It'll be the equivalent of a, of a full-time employee's income in Japan. We can get by on that. What am I worried about? I'm sorry to be so blatant and open, but this is this is this is what this meditation is about. is about reflection. <sighs> and why am I worried at all? I don't believe in free will. All this was, you know, in a. How do you call it? If it's is it a deterministic universe when there's quantum uncertainty? Out of my hands, universe. That's what it is. I guess not all of me is fully bought into that idea. All right.